What's going on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? So we back again for another episode review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, season six, episode eleven. Girl, this ain't gonna be a long review. Hopefully, okay, because y'all know I say that and give y'all a full 30 minutes and y'all will be like, girl, I thought you said it wasn't going to be long. But hey, it is what it is. But literally, this didn't give me nothing and I felt like they put the stuff in, oh, excuse me, the stuff in at the end to make it seem like somebody got a legitimate storyline that we actually care for and truly we don't. But hey, it is what it is. So we pick up what we left off. This is episode 11. What is it called? Betty's Blues, okay? Um... <clears throat> We pick up where we left off last week with this comeback group slash Black Expo um, get together type of meeting or whatever event. And um, we got two different issues that's going on here. We have a money issue for male, okay? A money and a time issue for male that's going on. And then we got Kimmy who don't care about the money. She just want them, Letitia and Marceau, to admit that this Black Expo, this comeback, so-called comeback group, uh, re-up 2.0 that they're doing is literally the comeback group and the ideas and stuff that Mar uh, Maurice and Kimmy came up with to start the comeback group or whatever before. And they can't admit that because that's all Kimmy wants them to say. Um, and I understand, like, don't present me an idea and try to make it yours when it literally has already been said by us before and you're just slapping another name on it. You know what I'm saying? And so I understand where she coming from and I just, it, it feels a little shady, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's what Kimmy coming from as well. It feels a little shady or whatever. And it's still not sitting right with me. The fact, oh, mm. The fact that, you know, they want male to work for free when we're not in this good place. You know what I'm saying? And I just don't understand where they're coming from with that. And then she said, you know, do y'all even have a date? And they said, yeah, it's supposed to be March 8th. I don't even think she's going to be able to make it. And then, you know, I think either more recent one of them had made a suggestion about male making a video or something and playing it at the event or whatever. And they was like, no, no. And even Mel had to be like, now, first of all, the teacher, when y'all first came up in here, you was just so on the, you know, just shutting everything down. No money, no money, no money, this, okay, fine. And then now you up here, as soon as we give another suggestion to get me to come, okay, you want me to come and, and you, or you want me to participate, and now you just shutting it down with the video footage situation. I understand what it is. And what it simply draws down to, and I don't care what nobody says, because later on in the episode, you know, truth be told, I'm going to say this. Mel, you sat there, and Kimmy, you sat there a little bit too long for me. Okay, because once I heard that, no, we're not finna go and um, admit the fact that this is the comeback group and these are uh, regurgitated ideas that we had and we just trying to name it our group, um, put our uh, 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 restaurant and brand name on it so that, you know, we can get a little bit of um, recognition and all that stuff. As soon as I would have heard that and seen that and then you said you're not going to pay us and um, the fact that you feel like if we getting paid is greedy. Actually, would have just left. Y'all stayed a little bit too long because at that point in time, it's nothing to talk about. But then later, you get Tisha meeting up with Mel because she was like, I just don't understand what exactly going on with her and why she feeling the way that she's feeling and saying the things that she's saying. And it's like, maybe it's something a little bit deeper that she's not trying to say. And I said, girl, Honestly, and you trying to say something, if you really don't want to be a part of it, all you have to do is say that you don't want to be a part of it, and it'll be fine. You know uh, in your goddamn life that it is not going to be fine, and you're not going to be okay with her just saying, no, it's all right. You know, that's cool. If you're not going to be there, you're not going to be there. It's totally understandable. You know, Mel says she has some dates or whatever coming up with Eric Bellinger, so I guess she's going to be performing or whatever. She said that at the comeback group meeting, or I should say the Black Expo meeting. And then she said that with Letitia, right? And I'm sitting here like, Letitia, baby. Now, I know people say that you dumb, but I really feel like you not and you just play this role, okay? Because at the end of the day, you can't sit here and tell me that you will be 100% on board to start working in any type of business or so-called all of a sudden we cool and uh, want to be friends, fake friends type of capacity 
after somebody just told you a couple of months ago at a reunion show without even sitting down and having a freaking conversation because I don't recall them sitting down and having a conversation and discussing the fact that, hey, I know we got off and um the reunion was really messed up. I know I said some things about you, but that's literally how I felt at the moment, you know, because I was hurt. I'm pretty sure you hurt. And, you know, we just been going through this back and forth motion. And you know what? At this point in time in my life, I just realized that I, I don't want to do that anymore. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to apologize to you for what I said. Hopefully you can re be receptive to that and receive that. And if you apologize, fine. If you feel it in your heart, too, I will accept it as well. If not, that's okay. I ain't seen nothing like that. So how the hell we jump from the reunion and you calling me a goddamn dark soul and I'm evil and all this stuff and my soul come from a dark place and, you know, I'm a devil in sheep clothing, as you said, you know. Um, how, how we go from that to you wanting me to be up at the uh, Black Expo and everything's supposed to be okay and I'm supposed to work for free for you? Like Mel said and like we've been saying, baby... We not on the same page like we used to, okay? We not on that, ooh, it's dust. Mm, okay. We not on the same page like we used to. Girl, I feel like I'm about to sneeze. Mm -mm, we not gonna do that. Okay. All right, okay. We not on the same page like we used to. We, we long gone past that, all right? And um, no, I'm just here because Carlos told me to come here. Carlos said, stop all that arguing, all that bullshit, and that's what it is, okay? We're not about to work for free. That's not what about to happen. And not when your man gonna sit there when um, Mel was like, you know, she was saying this at the group too. It's gonna take baby steps before I get back into that mode of wanting to actually really, really do stuff with y'all like that. And he gonna say, well, basically trying to say what's taking you so long. And, and you being here, this ain't baby step. What is it? Okay, you can't you can't do an event with us, but you can sit here and be in the same place with us by doing this meeting. She said it's baby step. And I hate when people do stuff like that because you're forcing it and you're trying to rush stuff. If you hurt me or I feel as though you hurt me, how dare you tell me that basically try to rush my process because you want something out of me? You can't tell me when I'm supposed to get over it and when I'm supposed to be receptive to you 100%. No, that's not how it works. And I just don't understand how come people don't um, understand that. And you want to know why they keep doing this to mail or whatever? Feel how you feel about the bitch because maybe I feel the same way. Understandable. Understandable. But on this part, I'm 100% with her. And it's just the facts of the matter is. Who has the drawing power to get the people to the boot? Who has the drawing power of this show, of this little franchise? Even out of all the cities that's coming. You got D.C. and you got Detroit that's coming. Out of all three cities, we ain't even seen Detroit. Melody has the most star power out of it okay meaning she got the most draw draw factor you know that's just how it is that's just how it is and after that i believe it's martel because martel got a lot of drama that surrounded him and he's been in the blogs and there's been a lot of negative whether you want to take it as negative or positive or whatever he's been in the blogs he's with uh what's this i was about to say rochelle um uh, sheree and all of that stuff so it's them two you know what i'm saying but she's number one that's just what it is and it's been like that for a minute now okay and it is what it is because at the end of the day what do I want to see more Reese for? I barely know what you do. I know you do credit and you probably a little lawyer or something, but I don't care. What do I want to see Kimmy for? I mean, besides the fact that, you know, I want to see if she's okay and, you know, you're looking good and to say, you know, you inspired me uh, with this whole, your health pro uh, progress and the way that you're doing your journey and showing that. That's one thing. Okay, fine. What do I want to see Marcel for? You're sexist, you're misogynistic, you barely let your wife do anything, you barely respect her. I don't want to see you, I don't, I, don't, I don't want business advice from you, even though I see that you're actually doing something. But from what I'm seeing on TV, I just don't want to be associated with that. Letitia, what do I want to see from you? Absolutely goddamn nothing. You give me nothing. Okay, the only one that has that drawing factor is Melody, and they know that. So, therefore, they need Melody to actually be there to bring those people in. I don't care what people say. That's just the fact of the matter is. I had posted that on Twitter, and somebody said, nah, I really think it's just because they know that if people show up, they know it's going to be filmed. No, they don't know it's going to be filmed, and 
even if it is filmed, they don't know if it's going to actually be shown. So that is not a drawing factor, okay? So, um, no, it's, it's because they know mail is the bring in. That mail is going to bring in, bring the people in, unfortunately. And when I say unfortunately, meaning that she's the only one in the cast people give a damn about. For the most part, whether it's to hate her or it's to love her. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what it is. And so, you know, they come to some situation or some resolve where she says she might come or she'll see what's going on and here go Letitia. And I'm just going to be like, you better say that you're not on coming and you better not be uh, booed up with somebody and we see you out on vacation with somebody else. And I said, girl, even if you do, that's her right. <laughs> okay. But they left that conversation and, you know, they didn't, they weren't mad. They was cool with each other for the most part. But speaking of, Melody had went to a little um, strip aerobics pole dancing class or whatever, and she brought Nell. Now, she said Nell is a really good friend. Um, Nell is still part of her circle because Nell is trustworthy, loyal, and all that stuff. Okay, understandable. Now, if y'all really good friend, why you keep calling her Miss Nell? Girl, I just want you to call her Nell because every time you say Miss Nell, you make Miss Nell sound like she's 60-something years old. Okay? And Nell got the body of a 35-year-old. All right? I was looking at it. I said, now, Nell, you know you look like you can't work that pole. Now, quit fucking playing. Okay? But it was really cute. They had a lot of fun. You know, um, <clears throat> and speaking of, you know, what we talked about last week about uh, Melody not bringing her man on the show. We don't give a damn if she bring her man on the show. Okay, that's understandable. And 9 out of 10, she giving off a little bit too much information now because y'all probably going to find her man and who he is by the time the season is over with or by the time it go on mid-season break. You know what I'm saying? So, there's that. And again, I'm with the people who said... I understand exactly why she wouldn't bring her man on the show and Martell a factor as well, but also you need something for a storyline, so I get it. It's like I said, it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't, you know, like you need something, but then I understand why you wouldn't do it, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know motherfuckers gonna find out. So she gives us a little bit more information. So she spent a little, uh, same, what was it? valentine's day with him and st bart's or whatever you know they was like because you was up there posting this picture with this man and it's like girl you think we ain't gonna ask a question you can ask questions like she told kim you can ask questions that don't mean i'm gonna answer it but listen i'm gonna just say this i had this list right you know i wanted servitude i wanted protection i wanted him to be this and to be that and he checks off all the lists including some more that i didn't even realize that i needed and you know what i was with him and all this time that i've been with him it's like he's very protective and you know what i sat down and i sat down to myself and i was like so you know what? This man is so protective of me, and I never felt protected before. And I'm realizing that in the last few years of my last situationship that I was in, my husband was supposed to give me that, and he never made me feel protected. I said, God damn. <laughs> I said, oh, that man is blowing her back out. That's what it feel like, okay? But, hey, as long as Melody is happy, she deserves, you know what I'm saying, at this point in time, after the bullshit that she done had, went through whatever with uh martell you know i ain't mad at her and i'm really not mad at anybody that want to keep their relationship close to the best especially being in a situation you know as much as people including me would like to see who the new person is on the show and all that stuff and you know how that interacts or whatever it's understandable why she would keep that close to the vest because look at the motherfuckers around her you know what i'm saying it's it's, it's understandable but um she seems to be happy and in a good place and that's all you can ask for at this point um moving on from that we get this whole scene with mar so he was at one of his um development places that he's leasing out uh kind of find out it's a it's going to be a barbershop and you know he had like four buildings or four you know, areas or whatever. He already rented out three. He got one that's need to be rented out. And so, you know, I ain't, I ain't even mad. He making his money and all that stuff. Cool. Okay. But Courtney come over there to talk to him about, you know, having a family work for you and work with you and all that stuff and how that goes. And I'm sitting here like, child, of all people that you want to ask, when he barely even let his wife work for him or work with him, I'm going to say, 
But, you know, they had that little conversation all because of what happened at the end of the episode. Listen, first, before we get on that, Marceau and Tisha went to go look at an apartment. Okay, I said an apartment. I thought y'all was going to get like a little rental home or whatever. All, they already in a rental home or whatever. I don't know what they in. Because if you are in a rental, why are you fixing it up yourself or whatever? And they giving you options like that. So did they buy the house that they are in now? Because now they're going to renovate the house. Have them staying at another place, a little apartment or whatever for like six months or so. Because that's what Tisha said. She told the realtor six months or less. And um, they was talking about it or whatever. Um, so I guess Marcel gonna stay at the house while they re renovating it, and the kids and everything gonna stay at the apartment. And I think Tisha either wanted all of them to stay there or just all of her and the kids, because Marcel suggested that you know MJ, the older son, would stay with him, you know, while he renovates the house. And she was like, "So y'all can have a bachelor pad." I said, "Girl, ain't nobody got time for all of that." You know, he going down all the motions and all the things that he didn't repair for her and how he didn't get it done. You know, that Mother's Day trip you went on and when you came back, you had your closet done. You had this done. You had that done. Okay. Okay. Basically, Tisha said we all going to be together. That's just what it's all going to come down to. Meanwhile, we get to this situation with Stormy and her people. Girl, they gave us a whole scene at the end. They gave us like 15 minutes almost at the end. Or I should say a little bit of 10, you know. Uh, and then they're going to give us a to be continue for next week, okay? Because a mess, a mess. Now, I ain't asked for this. I didn't care for it, but I was eating it up. You want to know why? Because, bitch, I'm going to tell you this. I'm on Junior's mama's side, okay? Because Miss Betty, like I told y'all, all the Bettys that I know are messy as hell. And especially if they older, because all the Bettys that I know are older women. You know what I'm saying? And they're messy as hell. And Miss Betty, Stormy Mama, she is messy as shit hell. And let me just say this. I don't like to talk about people moms, okay? But when you come on the show and you just being disrespectful as shit and you giving off that disrespectful ass energy or whatever, you giving leeway for us to just go in on your ass, okay? And that's just what it is. Miss Betty, you are you are an evil person. I'm sorry to say that and I'm sorry to get up in people, family business or whatever, but again, you put it onto the TV and it's in the public, so therefore I should be able to, you know, um, speak on this stuff and if you don't like it, that's just you. You know what I'm saying? You should hop your ass off. But at the end of the day, just like we couldn't stand Miss Wanda because she was doing too much, Mama, you got... Miss Betty got a naturally evil-looking face, okay? She got a natural, you know, look about her face like she just got this nasty energy. Now, you talking about male's energy. Every time we done seen your ass, you been either your face scrunched up, you about ready to cut somebody out, now you about to fight your sister. You being mean to your sister. I said, what is going on? I just felt like I shouldn't have been privy to this information because Miss Betty, it ain't making you look no good. Baby, at this point in time, at least Miss Wanda made me laugh, even though she was an asshole sometimes, most of the time. She made me laugh, okay? You ain't made me laugh not once. You just been rude and disrespectful. And it's one thing to be that way with strangers and everything, and it's another way to be that way with your family on TV. Now, how come you had to tell that lady her um her uh uh freaking um son got fired from the warehouse okay and junior junior you 29 years old you can't tell your mama that you got fired and second of all well why you gotta tell your mama anything okay these are adults why y'all run to y'all mamas i understand this is a family business and technically speaking it's not because it's stormy's business that she just so happened to let y'all come on board or you come on board junior but junior you wasn't doing a job okay i really feel like courtney was not lying when he said that you was not doing what you were supposed to do and given the way that this whole situation looked it looked like you are the type that'll try to take advantage because you family right but at the same time Miss Betty didn't have to tell her sister that shit the way that she told her sister about Junior being fired, okay? And then, when they getting into it, I said, why are we getting into it like this? 
it felt so heavy and it just got real nasty real quick okay you know because miss miss um miss junior mama said she got caught off guard when she said that she was like you know junior don't work here at the warehouse no more and all this stuff he said something about stormy and um they was going all that and i was like wait a minute first of all betty was lying because he ain't saying nothing about stormy that ain't why he got uh fired and he was going to talk nasty about stormy or whatever and then i'm sitting here like Julia mama said she just wished she could have had the chance to say it, uh, somebody else to say it or somebody else to know, uh, 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 not say it the way that she said it or whatever. That secondhand information. Like Stormy said, I don't understand why Junia ass didn't tell her. Okay? That's one thing, you know. But, um, <laughs> next thing you know, they get into it and they said, who business is this? That's what Junior mama said to, um, you know, Stormy, who business is this? This mask, okay? You know, so what you got to say? What you got to say? She was like, I just wanted everybody to be able to know, like, how come you not hearing it from Junior? Girl, next thing you know, she, uh, Betty was like, um, either his mama said, that man is 29 years old. And I can't tell him what to do. And you ain't going to be getting mad at my child. Every time you get mad at my child, you up here talking about something. I need to whoop him. You going to whoop him. And I just be pissed off how you be treating him. And how you, uh, uh, he be treating you. You treat my daughter and all this stuff. That's what was going on. Next thing you know, Betty said, okay, and what? Was um Stormy that when um he had to she gave him fifteen thousand dollars to get him out of jail? I said, what the fuck they gotta do with this whole situation? We're talking about a job. Next thing you know, you know when you be petty and you be mad and you just trying to be nasty for no reason. You just bring up stuff that ain't got shit to do with the conversation because you know what's gonna hurt just to fucking hurt because you feel like you losing the battle. And that's what I felt like Miss Betty was doing. She brought that whole situation up about Junior being in jail and everything, and um uh, Stormy had to bail him out or whatever, and she. Was sitting back like I sure the fuck did and junior mama going off get your hands off of me because junior was trying to calm her down get your hands off of me bitch don't you ever fucking say shit about my goddamn son the fuck ain't nobody say nothing about your daughter going to jail okay anybody go up I said Betty said so the fuck what even Stormy said I mean yeah I went to jail I was in I was a college student and then I sat in jail for three months I mean three days and the judge said I'm an exemplary college student let me go <laughs> yeah so why are we upset? Even Junior said, okay, so the fuck what? Junior went to jail, so what? And I said, well, Betty, why you put that out there like it was a getcha gotcha moment when your daughter went to jail too? <laughs> and I said, what is happening? This felt so... I don't know. It, just, it didn't feel real to me, but it could be. You know what I'm saying? It just felt like we needed something to film, okay? And the mamas is mad at each other, you know? And I just felt Miss Betty was just really nasty of a person, okay? You know, mama outside, junior mama outside just 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 mad and pissed off and said, I ain't never going to talk to that bitch again. I said, understandable, Miss Junior Mama. Okay, Junior said, bitch, why are you always trying to put somebody's laundry out there as, as if your laundry clean? I said, tell her, bitch. You know, tell her. Okay? And I'm just like, girl, this is a mess. Stormy tried to go out there to talk to uh, her auntie, and she just didn't want to talk. She was like, Stormy, I'm just tired of that bitch. Now, Stormy said the situation got worse between the mamas when the daddy was dead or, or was sick. And um, I guess Aunt Betty was just uh, taking the brunt of all the work or whatever, and she feels some type of way. So the fuck what you should open up your mouth and be like, girl, we got to do the shit 50, 50. All right. This, this, this is messy. And I feel like I shouldn't be involved in it. And I feel like this was just weirdly placed into this shit. But Hey, y'all tell me how y'all felt about, it. and then it's a to be continued. Stormy said, go over there and hug your sister. How the fuck I'm gonna hug somebody that's walking away. I said, miss Betty, God damn, <laughs> just nasty. Anyway, that was, um, you know, what is this called? Oh, Love and Marriage Huntsville. Bitch, it's 9.06. I'm going to get a ticket so I can go see the black in it. I'll see y'all later. Peace.